Voiced by Seth Rogen, Alan is the chillest dude in the whole cosmos. He does not judge, and he is funny. Since his first appearance in the comics or the TV series, Alan the Alien quickly became a fan favorite for the way he talked, the way he carried himself, and how genuine he was. So today, we will learn a bit more about his anatomy and try to understand why Alan is able to match powers with the Invincible and how Alan never seems to die. So strap in and let's get on with it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Alan the Alien? From which species does he belong? In the Invincible TV show and comics, Alan the Alien plays a crucial role as Mark's friend and, later, Nolan's friend too. But who is he, and where is he from? In the comics, we learn that Viltrumites are a brutal race who have been trying to expand their territory for ages. They remained undefeated, and their plan for expansion was going very well. One of the planets they decided to conquer was the home of the race of the Unopians. The Unopians were not strong enough to defend their planet against the Viltrumites, so they decided to escape and have their home planet destroyed. The surviving Unopians got under the protection of the Coalition of Planets, an intergalactic organization that was made for protection against the Viltrumites. Once the Unopians had risen significantly in the ranks of the Coalition of Planets, they proposed a solution for the Viltrumite expansion problem. They suggested that they would create genetically enhanced Unopians who would be strong enough to fight off the Viltrumites. When Thaddeus, the head of the Coalition of Planets, gave his approval, the lab tests began. Genetically modified Unopians were grown in camps and tested for the signs that they wanted to see. However, the results were not satisfactory at all. The Unopians born this way were either deformed or mentally retarded and were not proper fighters that the Coalition of Planets needed to face off against the Viltrumites. That was until Alan was born. He was the first and only result of this experimentation. He came out as perfect as he did. Once he was born, he was taught the ways to fight in preparation for him to face off against the Viltrumites. His strength was exceptional because whoever he faced off against, no matter how strong, Alan was able to defeat them. That was until the time Alan faced off against a Viltrumite. His winning streak until then was completely destroyed, because the Viltrumite beat him up to a pulp. So given that the plan was a failure, the Coalition of Planets stopped experimenting on Unopian fetuses and the project was scrapped. But instead of letting Alan go to waste, they used him in a different way. Alan was made the Champion Evaluation Officer, as Alan had proven himself to be strong enough to beat anyone except Viltrumites. By making him the Officer, the Coalition wanted him to go to the ends of the cosmos and test the strongest individual present on that planet to see if they were stronger than him. If they are, then the Coalition would know that there is someone out there stronger than Alan who might be able to go against the Viltrumites and perhaps win. You sure you're the same guy? What does he look like? As Alan the Alien is a Unopian, he definitely looks different from the Viltrumites. Unlike the Viltrumites, who look almost human, Alan is very similar to the mythical creature called Cyclops. He has one big eye, and he does not have a nose. His eye is big with a tiny pupil. His skin is brick red in color, which creates a contrast with the white leotard that he wears. Alan has three fingers on each of his hands and three toes, which we see because Alan does not wear shoes. As he is the champion evaluation officer, Alan also wears wrist guards and ankle guards. These are gray in color and segmented. On top of this, Alan is often seen wearing a jacket. Alan Alan has a very prominent jawline, and his square features are made even more prominent by his tiny spiky ears. In the comics, we see him develop scales after a near-death match with the Viltrumite, something that we have not yet seen in the animated TV series. As far as his physique is concerned, he is definitely muscular, but not as muscular as Nolan in the TV series. In the comics, we do get to see Alan completely ripped at one point, which is very satisfying to see because who knew Unopians would have eight packs? Does he bleed? When we get to see Alan in the TV series, the first thing he does is he gets into a fist fight with Mark. The fight is quite matched, but there were no scenes where Alan was bleeding. So one might think that Alan does not bleed. However, as it turns out, the Unopians too bleed like us. In issue number 133 of the Invincible comics, we get to see that. By this issue, Oliver, Mark's half-brother, was killed off by Thrag the Viltrumite. At Telescria, the funeral was being held, and Mark was not very happy with it when Alan tried to apologize to him over Oliver's death. In Mark's eyes, Alan was the one who directly caused the death of Oliver by allowing Oliver to go undercover amongst the Viltrumites led by Thrag, and Mark did not hesitate to throw a punch at Alan. 
Alan tried to understand that Mark was just upset about the loss he had suffered and wanted to be understanding. But when Mark started throwing those hands, Alan was not going to sit down and take it. Soon enough, the two friends were duking it out in the sky. In the midst of the fight, Mark headbutts Alan and we see him bleed. Even Mark's wife breaks up the fight between them, and when Alan comes down from the sky, giving the couple some space, he is approached by Tara, the daughter of Invincible. She asks him about his bleeding eye, and that is when we learn that Alan's eye is very sensitive, and it does not take a lot to hurt him in that area, which is what Mark did. We see him bleed in the first few issues as well when he faces off against Filtramites, but we rarely see him bleed when he faces off against other species. Does he have the ability to regenerate his body parts? When we first meet Alan, he seems like a strong alien fighter. But as the comic series progresses, we see him show up with some tricks up his sleeves. One such trick is his regenerative ability. Perhaps this is because he is a Unopian, or because he is a genetically modified Unopian. But Alan has the power to regenerate himself from near-death experiences. The more dangerous, the closer to death he is, the faster he seems to heal. We see this happen very clearly in issue 129 of Invincible Comics. In the previous issue, we learn that Alan is very worried about Thrag and his group of hostile and rogue Viltrumites. He is scared that as the head of Telescria, he will not be able to protect the people. That is when he was called for an emergency meeting by Elia. He thought it would be something related to Thrag, and he was right, but only partially. As it turns out, Elia was not too happy with how Alan was dealing with the threat that Thrag imposed. So she wanted to take matters into her own hands. She betrayed Alan and detonated the bomb, which almost blew him apart in several pieces. In the issue we mentioned, Invincible and Eve show up to check on Alan, and over the course of four panels, we see Alan recover from getting his limbs and face blown to bits. It seemed like it only took him a few days to regenerate his limbs as well as his face, which truly shows how strong his healing abilities are. Another thing we notice is that once he healed, he ended up with scales on his skin, which he did not have before. So we can assume that not only does he have regenerative abilities, but Alan also has adaptable regenerative abilities, which gives him new features to adapt to any sort of attack that made him crippled the previous time. I'll be ready. I hope so. What's the plan in the meantime? Does he have the ability to read minds? Alan did take Mark by surprise in their first meeting, not only because he matched Mark in strength, but also because of his telepathic abilities. Thanks to that particular feature, Mark and Alan could sit on the moon and have a conversation, which led to Alan learning he had been coming to Earth instead of Urath for the past few years. Now, this telepathic ability is something Alan uses later in the comic series, which leads to him becoming friends with Nolan. When the Viltrumites captured Alan, he noticed Nolan when he was being moved into his cell. Now, Alan had seen Nolan before, because before Mark fought Alan, Nolan was the one who nullified that threat. So, using his telepathic abilities, Alan and Nolan started talking. Alan told Nolan about his plan to break out of the captivity, and at first, Nolan did not wish to take part in it. But as the two men talked about their loved ones, Nolan realized that if he did not help Alan, he would never get to see his wife again, whom he loved very much, even though it is against the Viltrumite code of conduct to fall in love. With their loved ones in their minds, the two men broke out of captivity, which set the stage for bigger problems, as we see in the comics. Another time we see Alan use his telepathy is when he realized that Tara, Mark and Eve's daughter, is planning on punching him in the eye at Oliver's funeral because she wanted to see if it truly made Alan bleed as easily. How does Alan instantly get the ability of power adaption? While it may seem like Alan's ability to adapt seemingly comes out of nowhere, that is not quite accurate. When it comes to Alan, he has something known as reactive adaption. When it comes to evolution, adaption is a key feature. If you do not adapt to the hostile environment, you will perish, and only the fittest will survive. Following this, Alan has reactive adaption, where whenever he faces near-death incidents, he immediately goes through an evolution as a result of it to become better fit to survive. We see it specifically when he faces off against Viltrumites and almost dies. When he regenerates himself, there is more muscle mass for him. Similarly, when he gets hurt thanks to Elia, as he heals, we see him covered in scales, almost to protect him from the flames should there be another bomb detonated near him like this. Is he stronger than Viltrumites? There is speculation that Alan Alan is the strongest character in the whole Invincible universe, and there is a reason for it. Thanks to his reactive adaption, what does not kill him makes him stronger. Given that Viltrumites are something that should have killed him, and he has faced off against them, not once but several times, there is a chance that he is immortal or unkillable. 
From the first time we meet Alan, it is clear that he is quite strong as opposed to a normal human, but when he gets beaten down by the Viltrumite trio, Alan returns with superhuman strength that is far more visible than ever before. Previously, his muscle mass was not that dense, but after the beatdown from the Viltrumite trio, he regenerated, returning with bulkier features and strength that is incomparable. With how he is able to match Mark's punches, punch for punch, it may very well be that Alan has a very comparable strength to Viltrumite's. What is his favorite food? Now, when you have been traveling for a really long time, and you finally come home, there are a few things that you usually look forward to, like getting a good meal and your favorite people. For Alan, his favorite food is fresh canslock, and his favorite person is, of course, Talia. Once Alan comes back to Telescria after his months-long mission, these are two things that he is looking forward to the most. Alan is seen enjoying fresh cans lock with Talia at the restaurant when their lovely date is cut short by the Viltrumite trio, who decide to pay Alan a little visit and learn about Nolan and Mark. We never get to see Alan finish his food, which is not a nice thing to happen to anyone. Does he have any love interest? Can he reproduce? Alan is one of the strongest characters in the whole Invincible universe. It is only fair that he ends up with a baddie himself, and Talia is a certified space baddie. She is definitely not a Unopian, which causes some issues between the couple. What issues, do you ask? Well, as Ellen disappears from the majority of time whenever he does come back, Talia throws herself into her lover's arms, hoping for some intimacy. But as we know, the Unopians were left almost extinct after the Viltrumites attacked them, so Unopians were forced to make breeding camps to grow in numbers. This mentality is something Alan follows too, as it is one of the sacred laws in the Unopian culture not to perform physical acts of love. This topic has been brought up in the comic several times by Talia herself, and it is clear that this is one of the major issues their relationship struggles with. Given that this is an interspecies couple, it is quite unknown if Alan would be able to produce babies with Talia or be able to reproduce at all. So, with no kids in sight, and Alan being at home in Telescria more often than not, Talia is the one thing that keeps him busy when he is not worried about rogue Viltrumites. Uh, yeah. I don't understand. Grab a seat. This may is he immortal? When it comes to the status of Alan's mortality, it is a very dubious thing. Alan is a Unopian, a significantly less strong race that was very much obliterated by the Viltrumites when they attacked. But as Alan is also genetically modified, he ends up with reactive adaption, which allows him to evolve every time he is near death. He simply does not die. When the three Viltrumites attacked him, Alan was ripped apart completely, and his entrails floating everywhere. However, once put back together, he not only healed, he ended up being stronger than before. Because of this, one may consider him immortal because, at the end of the day, Alan is surviving things that were meant to kill him off a long time ago. And you shaved your mustache! Stay away from my planet! Marvelous verdict. Alan is an amazing character in the Invincible universe. He is a passionate, hard-working guy, and he has set forth major character arcs in Nolan and Mark. So honestly, we cannot wait to see how things end up with Alan in Season 2 of Invincible, which will be coming out in November 2023. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone!